Hey, it's Roman, and I'm here with Yaroslav. Yaroslav, we haven't talked in a while. It's been a while since we've yeah. talked, and, yeah. and I miss it. Yeah. And I'm determined now to start doing these videos again, try and do them weekly. Yeah. And just stuff that I, I want to do stuff that I would want to see myself as a video. Um, and uh, hope you don't mind. I, I like a little dribble too. I don't want it to get too technical or too sure. deep because sure, sure. otherwise uh, it's not something you can have running in the background at work. Um, but uh, yeah, so there's a few things we talked about talking about. Yes. Uh, <laughs> And you're still doing SharePoint. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and you still I'm not have... getting away from that anytime no, soon. <laughs> no, in fact, you've got out a fourth book now, Yes, right? it's a fourth book. It came out January 10th. Yeah. January 10th. And what's that book called? Uh, it's called uh, Rapid SharePoint 2013 Development. Oh, wow. So it's okay. so far very, very successful. Come check it out on Amazon. Okay. <laughs> Here's my so piece. you got a little bit of SharePoint knowledge. I had just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do what I can. Um, and I'm still busy doing CRM work, uh, Microsoft CRM work, so we do kind of have a complementary yeah, yeah. type work. Yeah. Um, the thing that we want, thought we'd chat about today was just when, when do you use a list and when do you stop using a list and it starts becoming um, something that should happen in a database? Yeah. And so what's your take on So, on okay, well let me turn that around, Ron. When would you use a database? Um, well, I mean, what we were taught at school and relational table math, a database done properly is the, is the smallest aggregating of data that, that you can make. For example, you don't want one list with absolutely everything in it. Um, and, and then if you had some sort of cross-reference list, you don't want to duplicate everything you had in that other list. And so you essentially, you've got tables or lists that cross-reference other tables or lists. Yeah. And that way you can find out all the information related everywhere. Yeah. But just by cross-references instead of, instead of right. one gigantic list. So it's very sort of, you know, custom approach, right? Like you do yeah. your best design for a particular scenario. Right. And then, then there's SharePoint, which is out of the box, you know, it comes, many companies have it as an out of the box product, well, all of the companies, right? Microsoft like makes a product, yeah. you have no choice, you buy it and yeah. you make it whatever you want to make it. Right. And, and that kind of, that product covers a variety of scenarios and it has a concept of a database-like structure, okay. aka list or document library. Now what I can see happening though is people taking it way too far. I, yeah. I mean, it's what I've seen. at clients places where the clients yeah. will they'll make a list and then they'll, they'll, yeah. they'll start doing stuff that really I want to push them in the direction yeah. of a CRM or an ERP yeah. or just a simple yeah. access database even just to get this thing done. Well see, but, see that's, that's the whole thing right so SharePoint has its own SQL database on the back end where the structure of that database is optimized for portal like scenarios so mm -hmm. for intranets, extranets, public sites partner sides. So it's right. the database there is structured to support SharePoint, not to support really your data. Right. And so all of the list information is stored in the in a single, you know, in one of the single or several tables. So you end up with uh, you know, if you add too many items to the to the list, it's all end it's all in the same database with all yeah. the other items. Right. So but you know there's this factor is that well lists allow so much. They allow us to uh, you know do a uh, activity feeds and alerts and workflows and uh, you know manage permissions and all that so right. a lot of people are tempted to use less to store their data because of so much because of all of the experience around CRUD and everything yeah. and validation and everything yeah. is taken care of so a lot right. of people are like well we're using it here why don't we t put it push it to a next level right. Right? because they want to they don't want to design the custom database they just want to take advantage but they may be you know at the point where they're doing it now they're doing it wrong yeah so we want to avoid that and there's a couple of ways to avoid that okay so when you see that you're doing it wrong and you, you actually you know you're kind of like you have that feeling where a consultant tells you you know you should be using the database and you're like well I'm gonna sacrifice all that stuff that comes in SharePoint out of the box right not always right okay. so there's a couple of things in SharePoint uh, business connectivity services allowing you to connect uh, to a SQL database or other data source and right. you know even web service yeah. surface it as a SharePoint list so you, yeah. 
retain some of the functionality. And another one uh, that we talked about, you mentioned access. Yeah. Right. So Access Service 2013 allows you to con to store data in SQL and all of the and things. then render it through lists in SharePoint. And render in list-like UI. So you. So, so I could actually have a full-on proper relational table uh -huh. in SharePoint. Absolutely. So you design your UI. But then I wouldn't want somebody thinking, like if I was at a client site, I would not want them thinking, oh, well, I'll just redo an entire CRM system in it. Yes. Uh, it to think that way is the same as to think, well, I'll just redo an entire accounting system. Exactly. You, know, you, you could if you wanted to. I mean, go for it if you want to. Yeah. But why waste the effort yeah. when... There's been like how many years of us using accounting systems and CRM systems. There's no need to replicate that point. effort. I mean, I'd really push the client. Exactly. Over. That's the whole point of buying a commercial off-the-shelf product, right? Right. Because you want to use as much of that commercial off-the-shelf as possible. Right. You don't want to redesign, reject things. Right. And, and it's a standard thing around many consultants, right? Like, I'm an expert, let's say, in SharePoint. Someone's an expert yeah. in something else, okay. uh, you know, the records management system, I may not know everything about that system yeah. or, you know, so I may want to try to mingle and put this, put my solution into SharePoint, so that it's, it's actually a very common problem, right? Right. Uh, and that's how those butchered solutions come, uh, you know, come to life because people... <laughs> because they've taken the product too far. Too that's far, your exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So. And so it's really knowing when to stop and start. And another, an example that I see over at the client sites is, um, let's say project data. Yeah. I mean, you can easily do some basic project information yeah. in a CRM system. Yeah. Yeah. And you can say, uh, you know, here's a project, it has a name, it's got a title, it's got activities against it. Why yeah. don't we just hold it in the CRM? But then you get the issue where, I know on the CRM side, mm -hmm. my complaint would be, well, it's difficult for us to really surface that for a third party. Let, let's yeah. say you wanted to interact on projects within your company with external parties. Yeah. Do you really want to do that through CRM? No. Yeah. So, so how much of the project data should live in CRM? How much of the project data should live in SharePoint? And right. do you really want to be keeping those things in sync? Not necessarily. Right. And so you end up getting a, a gray area yeah. in between there right now. Yeah. And I think I'm okay with the gray area. It's there. so so, and that's and that's a million dollar question, right? Several yeah. million dollars questions or answers. Right. So when do you recognize that your company should not? Because you know, if you're a small company, that's fine. You use one tool for everything, right? right. You can use Yammer or recent Microsoft acquisition, right? Yeah. For everything, yeah. for document management, if you want to, if you're small right. enough. But if you're, but when do you recognize that you need another tool? To, and actually, and when do you recognize that having those two tools, you now need to integrate to? Right. Because do you want management managing, like the PMO through through SharePoint, or do you want them managing the PMO through CRM? I would argue yeah. that it's easier for management, internal organization staff, to be using a CRM system and not a SharePoint system. And maybe integrate at some point too. And then so you're going to have some data that's going to be external and yeah. living in lists, yeah. where it's not fully relational, yeah. um, and then have that residing in, in the SharePoint. Yeah. And then, yeah, I'm that's actually working on a project where we're doing that right now. It's on top of my mind. Um, yeah. but. You see it again and again, and then yeah. where does SharePoint stop, and where does CRM it's, start, and it's too... It's a great, you know, a lot of people run into that sooner or later in their careers, right? So they're like, yeah. uh, you know, and, and that's the thing, Microsoft designs lots of product lines for a variety of different sizes of organizations, and they're yeah. not putting a little sticker saying, hey, this is for organizations, they do some have some guidance and stuff, yeah. but it's really up to you knowing the organization and knowing the future direction and the growth and et cetera and potential maybe acquisitions right. within an organization. Right, Where, right, right. What other software do you need and what other integration points do you need? Mm -hmm. And are they viable integration points? If you're going to kill, let's say, the child company's system and migrate everybody to your system, then you don't need an integration. So right. it's really, it's, it's normal to have those questions and those doubts, yeah. so it's just how you solve them. That's, yeah. That's important. Okay. Yeah. Um, and there was one other thing I wanted to talk about today quickly with you, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. just, I've become a bit of a Mac freak. Yes, uh, I'm not a fan, but, uh, well, 
yeah, okay, I'm a fanboy. I've, I've got a Mac at home. I've got an I've got a Mac Air here. I've got an iMac at home. I've got the Apple TV. We're completely we different. We've got two iPads. Well. <laughs> I've got an iPhone and i got an yeah. iPad Mini, yeah. believe it or not. Yeah. Um, and so, just like the question I was asking you about how you handle external parties yeah. wanting to access, like, let's say, a project system. Yeah. And we would do that in SharePoint, mm -hmm. not in CRM, because CRM is for internal mm -hmm. usage. Yeah. And let's say an organization had external parties coming in, like board members yeah. or um, external project people, yeah. or let's say auditors. Yeah. And they wanted it in, a tight, in the same fashion as a bring-your-own-device yeah. model. Yeah. We wanted to surface data to them to access. Mm -hmm. And what if you had iPads kicking around the office? And I know it doesn't have to be an iPad anymore. Uh, it can be whatever. It can be a, a, a Google device. latest Google device. Absolutely. But the idea that I want to, the thing that I want to know about, and I've seen it on my own Mac. Safari seems to render SharePoint just fine. I haven't had any issues. Yeah. I can't with CRM yet. I mean, the latest one's supposed to be coming out. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're recording this now. It's March 1st, 2013. Yeah. So. Yeah. It may, it, it could change. Yeah. But, yeah. So it's natural for, you know, Microsoft is trying to push all of their, they're now embracing more, more and more embracing standards, right? HTML5 yeah. and things like that, right? Versus yeah. having a standalone silver light like technologies. Right. So obviously they're moving that direction. Uh, why this is happening earlier with SharePoint, I think, is just because it's general portal technology, right? Yeah. It's a technology where people with lots of different devices are going to come in and, and and want to you know have the same interaction experience, right? So it's it's just because it's a portal technology. It's used for public sites, believe it or not. A lot of SharePoint implementations are public sites. So they're using it as a CMS. Yeah, I mean, what used to be a separate Microsoft yeah. CMS CMS product yeah. is now baked into SharePoint. Yeah, isn't exactly. It? So that's why I think it's earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, but going forward, like there's and, a lot. And if Safari Safari is built on WebKit. Mm -hmm. Which Chrome is built exactly. on WebKit, yeah. and I think um, Mozilla is built on, or Firefox is built on I'm not sure. WebKit. I'm Maybe. not sure, yeah. yeah. But it should render just fine in yeah. any of those browsers as well. So, so yeah. So then there comes a question about things like, okay, great, rendering is one thing. Uh, authentication used to be a problem, right? Yeah. But now where that's moving is that you're actually when you're authenticate when you're authenticating. It's not about the question about Windows authentication, forms authentication. You, when you're authenticating, you get you basically a ticket, authentication ticket gets created okay. and passed around versus some. So sort you're of using form form based authentication. Companies don't have to pay for another AD it, license. For exactly. So things. so even AD is now a, a ticket. You know, oh, it's okay. a claim. It's a called a claim now. So okay. your ticket or claim is being passed around different systems. Uh, yeah. So you you kind of have this single sign-on experience yeah. uh, across the different systems, and really it doesn't matter what device you're using, right? Okay. Um, so so that becomes less of a problem. Yeah. Uh, that's like I wouldn't say it's a new thing. It's yeah. you know it's definitely new, uh, but not too new. But right. it's definitely a thing going forward. Right. Yeah. Okay. So good. Is there anything else we want to talk about? Today? No. I don't know. I think, uh, that's, yeah, I think that covers enough. pretty good breadth of things, but we're definitely going to kind of, right? We're going to continue. Yeah, He's we'll promising con every week. Every so week. So, well, if you hold them to that promise. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. Yeah, and then we don't want too many topics. So today was no. lists and uh, CRM and which goes which way. And yeah. then we also wanted to just say Safari and other browsers yeah. accessing the system. Yeah. Okay. And where can people find. Um, your books, aren't they all on Amazon? Amazon? They're okay. all on Amazon, uh, and you can search for my last name, you can spell it, but um, <laughs> I'm also on Twitter, it's S. Pensarski, um, yeah. and I'm I'll on, put that up in oh, the, cool. at the end. So Sharemarch.com is my blog, okay. and I have a YouTube channel now that's growing. growing oh, really? Growing. Yes, yes. So maybe you can cross-post this yeah, on your YouTube channel. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would yeah. be great. Cool. That would be great. Yeah. Okay. And it's Ron DeJusty, and I'm at www.rondejusty.com, and I do CRM consulting. Yeah. And uh, I'll put that in the, in the, in the doobly-doo down below as well. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm.